What is up YouTube? Dang man, it has honestly been a minute. It's been a week and a half since I posted a video. I'm not usually like this. I usually post three videos a week. And there have been things that I've just been really trying to focus on and things that I've re really been trying to do within the last couple of weeks. But, and now I'm able to do this video. For those who have been following me for a while, and for all the new subscribers, I do have a plan and uploading at minimum of at least three videos this week. One going live tomorrow, Monday, and then a video going live on Wednesday, and then a video going live on Friday. If not, if I get lucky, if I get the time, I'll do even four videos. But that is the goal this week, and I'm excited to do this. But let's go ahead and go into this video. So today, this is a video that I've been, um, I watched actually last month. And this niche of viral is like a couple hundred thousand views. <laughs> And the video is called not everyone should code and if you're watching this channel There's a really good chance that you've seen that video There's a very good chance and if you haven't I'll put the link in the description below and when I watched this video It kind of blew my mind away. Um, well first of all, let me I actually took a screenshot uh, This video was at 247,000 views and it was number 34 in trending and I was wondering what the heck is making this video go viral And I figured man, you know what? I want to go ahead and watch it and I've only watched it once since then and this video went live on April 20th which is about wow literally a month ago yeah today's the 20th <laughs> Sunday so yeah I went live a month ago and yeah ever since then up to now within a month it has 847,000 views right and, and I and then when I was watching I was kind of blown away by some of the things that he said and I don't agree with some of them although some of them do make sense and that's why I figured I should make a reaction video to this so let's watch this video together guys and yeah Here's my action video to not everyone should code. $79,840. The average salary of a computer programmer in America. Average, meaning many can afford a big fancy house or rent a closet in San Francisco. Even the lowest paid 10% make more than the average American. Programming is so well paid because it's so in demand. And so Very in true. demand because it's growing so quickly in importance. But it's more than a trend. Surely it's the inevitable direction of things, right? Say something vague like programming is the future, and people conclude that fast forward 20 years, if you don't know how to program, well, good luck getting a job at McDonald's. But as long as there are jobs, economic laws say people will specialize, and there's no reason to think programming is any different. A valuable skill to learn? Absolutely, and more so every day. In the way of reading and writing? Not even close. Not everyone should code, and saying otherwise may only harm those you intend to help. Okay, now, important thing to talk about, like, for me, as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, been following my vlogs, um, within this channel, um, I say, I, I, what I do recommend is that everyone should code. And so, right now, we're coming from two different point of views. This guy says not everyone should code. I'm saying I think everyone else should try to code. And if you've seen my community tab, I even asked a question there, check it out. But let's go ahead and continue. So that's the purpose of this video, let's see two different point of views come together as we go ahead and look into this right now. And programming jobs pay especially well, so they're especially loved. But there's also something unique about these jobs in particular. America's power as home to so many global technology giants is hard to underestimate. Few companies have so much financial and cultural influence. People like President Obama are so vocal about coding because they understand this potential. So does China. They've decided it's too high a price to pay. And for technology companies, everyone should code is everyone should flood the market with the skills we need. Okay, first of all, wait, first of all, um, what are the reasons I started learning code is because of people like President Obama you know talked about how people really need to start learning it and I looked into it and I lost his video called learn code and that's why I'm here today he's saying things like these companies are saying everyone should code because they want to flood the markets with skills they need which is technically true but also I mean the reason that people should learn to code is because it is a future uh, which is what I generally do believe and, and I say this because my target of audience aren't the people who are lawyers aren't the teachers aren't people are people who already have a good job my target, my audience are people where, if you're like me, you didn't get a college d degree. Uh, if you're like me, you had a dead end job and you weren't really happy with that whatsoever. If you're like me, you felt like you had no hope in your own future because you didn't do well in school. And so you weren't able to reach your full potential and now you don't know what to do. Or let's say you do have a good job and you're not happy with it. Now him, he's targeting everyone, but my specific audience are those who feel like, do I have a hope? What can I do to get out of the situation? And so, just to get that in the point of view as well. So let's go ahead and continue with the video. Seeing trends, it's easy to make a prediction. 
it won't be long before nearly all jobs require programming, and the solution is to encourage an already financially troubled generation to pursue the high-paying, safe job of computer programming. But a little bit of foresight can be more dangerous than none at all, seeing the potential of programming without knowing what it's really like. Programmers do make a lot of money, but so do surgeons, actually three times as much, and dentists and psychologists and lawyers. So why is- True, okay, doctors, dentists, lawyers, like they all make a lot more money, even more than what a program could potentially make as well. But to become a doctor, it takes what, 12 years? A dentist, I don't know, how long, six, eight years? I don't know, let me know, comment below. Um, to be a lawyer, that takes years as well. And not even that, when you graduate from law school, it does not necessarily mean you're getting paid a lot as well. And so what's happening is that when you go up and try to become a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer or whatever you want to be, you're racking up loans. Now, if your parents are paying for your loans, that's a totally different story, right? This person's perspective is that if you go to college to get become learn computer science, you're also going to pay up loans. But from my perspective, from our perspective, from Dev's life, you don't need college to become a programmer. And so what I don't agree with this video is he's saying, why don't you just become a doctor and et cetera and make even more money, right? Why go to computer science? Uh, his perspective is he thinks everyone or a coder today is someone who learned computer science, who got a CS degree or who went to boot camp and paid thousands of dollars to go to boot camp. Um, and that's something I totally disagree with because you can get the jobs like I'm getting now without a degree and get paid well still, right? So I hope this is helping you guys, but let's go ahead and continue. I like this, this is fun. Could anyone perform surgery? Given Given enough time and training, yeah, maybe. But people have different talents. Surgery may be in high demand, but we know it's not for everyone. In fact, specialization is good. It's the reason we have computers at all. Every single one of us could be completely self-reliant, but you're probably not going to be the best hunter, cobbler, cook, engineer, and scientist in the world. When you have to do everything, you can be good at nothing. So how about this? You get really good at farming, I'll make bricks, and we can trade. This way we can both have really nice stuff. That's the basis for civilization. And you might say, well, both farmer and mason still need to read and write. But programming can't be such a skill. It's difficult enough that it just doesn't make economic sense for everyone. Okay. Just within this aspect, now I agree, coding is difficult enough where not just anyone can learn it, which is very true because it takes effort, but is it possible to learn it very much is. Now, he used an example where people who make bricks and people who make weed or farm weed come together to make something that they both need. Um, one thing I, he probably doesn't realize, or maybe he does, and maybe he just forgot to mention it, is that even farmers, what's happening is that they're using technology which people like you and I can code to help them farm even that much better. All of these companies, who do they need to exist Today, or even until at least to make a website so that they could be acknowledged in the world that they're an actual business that exists in the world today. They need web developers, they need programmers, they need software developers like you and me. Um, so, uh, although it is difficult, I mean, he's gonna touch this right now, so let's get into this first. A good teacher can take a complicated topic, deconstruct it, and explain it in easier terms. To make accessible is necessarily to simplify, but it's really easy to do what looks identical, but actually oversimplifies. In fact, that's the challenge of YouTube. Don't simplify and you have a boring two-hour video. Oversimplify and you paint a misleading picture. In its enthusiasm to make programming AKA accessible, everyone should code mate. does exactly that. <laughs> tap, 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 that's programming. Definitely not sitting at a desk for long hours solving problems. Here's the thing, whether you've been to college or have any programming experience, you can pay a company to teach you how to code in 14 weeks, and for not that much money. That should be a huge red flag. If you can become a developer in 14 weeks, either companies overpay for what's really a simple job, or there's actually much more to it. And of course there is. It's the difference between programming and computer science. The first you really can learn in 14 weeks. You can read it in a book. It's memorizing what to type to make a computer do a thing. That's what Everyone Should Code teaches, but it claims the benefits of computer science, solving efficient, creative, mathematical problems. That's what companies pay six-figure salaries for. And if that's your thing, awesome. In fact, I'm one of those people. But many, maybe most, wouldn't actually enjoy it. That doesn't mean you shouldn't teach programming, but it has to be honest. It can be accessible and inclusive, but not misleading. STEM is also cheered for the money, but that too attracts the wrong people. It would be awesome if teachers were paid more, but one benefit of what we have is how it selects for people passionate about the job, not just after a paycheck. Lots of people go 
into computer science just for the money, but they may end up hating it. And the irony is when you sell people on an unrealistic job, supply rises and salaries fall. Because you might imagine a huge team of people behind every tech company, but very few are actually engineers. When Instagram had 7 million users, it had 4 employees. 4, as in 4.0. There will be more demand for programming, but not unlimited demand. So we might as well attract who's actually interested. Okay. One thing I want to talk about right here. I agree in regards to coding bootcamp. You can't really learn exactly everything you need in the industry in 14 weeks. But one thing you have to understand is that these boot camps, they give you the foundation to build on top of that. It's the same thing like saying you can learn everything you need at a college in four years to get your job ready. Not even true. Right. What you learn in college, yes, you learn algorithms, which is important and which things I don't even know, which I want to be able to learn and I will learn eventually in the future. But what college does and what boot camps do, they simply build a foundation. Now, what you could get in college in four years, of course, is a lot more than, than what you do in a couple weeks at a boot camp. Now, one thing I do suggest is that, you know, boot camps are cool, college is cool, but you can teach yourself code. Um, what I use is Treehouse, you can check out the link in the description below, and you could gradually teach yourself code without paying $2,000 a month for a boot camp. You can just pay 25 bucks a month and try it out. And I think even just trying these online courses, schools, whatever you want to use, I prefer Treehouse. You could just try it out and see if you love it. And I mean, I, I do agree with what he's saying, which is true. But again, he's only thinking of just like one element of programming. There's a lot more sides of programming like web development as well. Uh, but let's keep going on this. Maybe programming isn't for everyone, but neither is history or music or art, and we all take those classes in school. Surely there are other benefits to learning programming. There's no doubt programming teaches skills like problem solving and creative thinking. But this puts the cart before the horse. If you're already sold on the importance of programming, it's easy to see everything through that lens. Coding is a way to understand our world and think differently. But if those are the skills we care about, let's find the best way to teach them. If we suddenly have 60 minutes of school to spare, I'd suggest a class on personal finance, or critically consuming media, or speaking. The class with the biggest impact on my life was debate, and critical thinking is much needed. Coding classes should be available for those interested, but not as a requirement. Because everyone learns differently, and at a different pace, and likes different things. I know my high school didn't teach all the subjects I wanted to learn, but that's what's so great about I do agree with some of the things he said um, within this video, but I also disagree in regards to the point where he's coming from someone with a four-year degree, and they do see things a little different from that point. Not that I'm saying they're not, they're not, they're less than us, right, or necessarily better at all, um, but that point of view is from someone who has a four-year degree, and from us, from people if you're watching my channel, there are quite a few people in school, which is good. Now, if I could start over and go back to college, I would get my CS degree. If I was 18 again, I would totally do that because it's totally worth it. Now, for people like everyone else who watches this channel, like you and me, who are in their mid-20s, late-20s, early-30s, late-40s, 50s, 60s, this doesn't apply to a lot of us. And the reason I'm talking about it is because like we are still able to attain that without a degree. Uh, yes, it's true, not everyone should code, not everyone will be able to, not even everyone who actually tries to learn code will get a job in the industry. But what I do recommend is that everyone should at least try it out. If you can, at least even do a seven day free trial here at Treehouse and just check it out, man. I mean, yeah, not everyone should code, but everyone should try. I mean, if you're in a situation like where I used to be, where I was in a dead end job, I hated what I did for a living, I wasn't happy, and I thought that I had no more future because I didn't do anything good in school, um, then you're probably like me, and I did something. I went out, I went to Treehouse, I learned code, and I taught myself code, and now I'm a developer today. Yeah, it's not too late, man. I mean, not everyone should code, but I think everyone should try. And if you're in it right now, don't let this video discourage you. Keep trying, and if you really love it, keep going, go all out. Don't give up, guys. Um, yeah, and that's my reaction video. Uh, maybe I'll do more videos like this. If you have any other videos you want me to react to, or etc., let me know in the video, in the comment below, or message me, and I'll do a reaction video to that. And I actually think I'm gonna do a reaction video once a week. I think it'll be cool. We'll see about it. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it. I know this video is a little longer than usual, but hey, it's a reaction video. Love you all. Thank you for watching. This is Krishan. This is Life Web Developer. See you guys in the next video on Wednesday. And I'm out. Peace.